Good morning guys. Welcome back. Today we're starting a new project. That's always the most exciting part. So the plan is to build a sugar shack. Now you guys might be thinking this is a crazy time to be building a sugar shack. It's sort of in the middle of the winter. It's the coldest day of the year so far. It's like minus 18 degrees outside and I'm in the pine trees. I'm looking for some logs. So this pine forest, the history of it, it was planted in about 1967, 1968, 1969. So the trees have been planted and it's never been thinned. It's basically a forest fire waiting to happen. So my job is to try to mitigate that risk by taking out all of the dead trees and I'm gonna use them to build a sugar shack. So it's kind of like, a, it's a dual purpose, dual, two birds, one stone. Kind of like a carbon sequestration. So if they just rot, they release CO2. And if they, you build them, it basically stores the carbon. There's a lot of benefits to this. And it also helps kind of give light to the forest floor in this little forest. Cause as you can tell, there's, it's sunny out today and there's no, uh, no light getting down to the forest floor. Let's, uh, let's get cutting. I'm freezing just standing around. It's, uh, it's cold. I got Don, Don's here today. Hey Don, Don say hello. He's a little blur in the background. We've got full PPE on today too. Don's got his helmet and his chap. By chaps, it means a little splash pants. He's not really gonna be using the saw. <laughs> I got I got my I got my chaps. I've got my thing. We've got our saws all all gassed up and ready to go. What's that? One down. One down. How many we got left? I have no idea. There's the positivity right there. That's one tree. One tree cut to length. One log, 13 feet long. Oh, this is gonna be a chore. So many of you don't realize how how much work this actually is. It's probably easier to build a log cabin if you just go buy fence posts and build it. It's almost more work acquiring the material than it is actually going to be building this cabin. Although it has to be done. So that's why we're doing it. We, we have to do it. Don's been limbing the trees as I've been cutting them. So he got the little tiny saw, little baby saw. The MS-170 steel. He's got that guy for limbing and I've got the 261C and the 261 steel to cut them down. They're really light. And again, these are all, these are the ones that we're cutting are, are standing dead. So all the tree huggers out there that are, you're cutting live trees. We're making room for the new trees to grow and preventing catastrophic forest fires in the future. The whole process of selecting these things are pretty easy because you kind of go up to them and you look up and you can see that this one's dead. You can see the bark is all sloughing off. Sloughing off, you look up top, there's no green pine on it. And if you're building a traditional log cabin, like the old, you know, the way the Northmen did, is they would, they would actually come out at this time of the year. What is it, like the second full moon in January or something like that? And what they'd do is they'd peel the bark off of the tree all the way up, kind of basically hatching the, the tree. And what it does is it causes stress in the tree and it forces the, whatever the stuff is, to go to the inside of the tree to get out of the cambium layer to go to the center of the tree actually making it harder it's an old technique but we're not doing that we're just cutting the dead trees and we're going to make something out of the dead so there don picked that one that one's don's baby so he's going to take the little tiny saw and limb it up and then i will come and cut it down with the big one so far so good one tree down hundreds to go It's not as heavy as you think it would be. When you cut a tree down, usually what you would do is do a front notch. And what that is, is like a pie shaped cut out of the front of the tree. And then you follow that with a back cut. And usually the tree would fall to the direction where your notch is. What we're finding 
in this forest in particular is that the trees are so close together you can cut them off straight and they just stand there they're like just poles they don't go anywhere so the logs themselves are not overly heavy i'm not that concerned if it falls on me if they're crazy heavy i would be more concerned of them crushing me i am concerned that they're going to crush me that's why i'm being careful cautious you can only be so cautious my plan on this particular tree is to make the butt end of the log go that away so what i'm doing is I'm going to cut the base of the tree and then put this there. And I'm going to knock the tree off the stump and it's going to slide that way. And then the tree is going to fall this way. That's my plan. Hopefully. That tree is completely cut off, sitting on the stump, and it's not moving. Whether or not up top there's like a branch, there's a small branch, a little tiny branch, it's just kind of hanging on. Again, this is a dangerous situation to have normally because it could go anywhere. But the thing is, is it's holding at the top. So I'm gonna kick it off the stump and see where it goes. I'm gonna back you guys up a bit. I think I need a longer board. If it works, is it stupid? I don't know. I think that works pretty good. Is it the right way to do it? I don't know. It's the way I'm doing it. Well, another day. Another dead tree coming down. So we've got ourselves a little bit of a pickle. By a little bit of a pickle, we've got a really big tree that, uh, that I might have cut the hinge off. But as you can see, it just stands straight up, doesn't move. It's a good place to practice falling trees because really, if anything goes wrong, it just stands there, it doesn't fall. So that's our problem. So what we've done, there happens to be another tree right here. That happens to be also dead. Again, it's got no, no leaves, no leaves, no needles all the way up. So our plan is to knock this tree into that tree and hopefully that'll solve all the problems at once or create more problems. Is that gonna create more problems, Don? Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> Always optimistic. So that's the uh, that's the plan. If you guys don't know what a notch is, it's basically like a bird's mouth in the tree. It'll, it gives you the direction of fall. And if you ever looked at your saw, there's like a little line, and that's kind of like the the sights on a gun. So you want to point that to where you want it to fall. And usually you want to cut it towards it's where it's leaning, because that's where it's naturally wants to fall, anyways. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's send this guy and see what uh, what happens. So when cutting a large tree like this, and by no means am I an expert at this. The tree, if all else fails, generally falls this way, or if it's gonna, the top's gonna snap off, it's gonna fall this way. So you always kinda wanna wanna basically diagonal away from the, where you're cutting. That's your exit. That's your exit strategy if, if, you know, stuff hits the fan. So you wanna keep those basically diagonal paths clear so you can run. You don't wanna hang around and watch it. More problem. We should cut a third tree to see if we can knock those two down. There we go. We got. <laughs> we we happen to have a third tree right here that's dead. So that one's hung up. This one's sort of hung up. This one might save us all. We're gonna grab our little slidey board. We're gonna put it behind here. We're gonna cut the hinge right off and hopefully it slides backwards and knocks the other one down.
trying. That was the least satisfying tree falling ever. That took 11 minutes in real time. We moved the butt of the stump 12 feet from the stump. The butt of the log 12 feet from the stump. That's uh, hard work. My tractor's laying over there laughing at me. <laughs> As you guys can see, this stuff is dry. I just don't want this much fuel sitting on the fourth floor, you know, for somebody's cigarette or lightning. Yeah, having this much fuel sitting around is, is pretty dangerous. So we're just gonna clean up as we go. There's a nice bed of snow everywhere. Everything's kind of wet on the ground so nothing will catch. And you know what? Dual purpose keeps us warm while we're working. So we're just gonna keep plugging away, basically taking some trees down, all the dead things, and uh, clean up as we go. The cleanliness is next to godliness. You need a clean forest. Taking out trees, we've been actually cleaning up as we go. So we've been knocking them down and then whatever's closest. So we've five or six trees, seven trees, all in a bunch. And then we're taking the brush, we're piling it, we're burning it as we go. So we don't have a giant mess in here in the spring. Cause once it gets covered in snow, you can't get it back out. Late day now, we got, uh, they got some sunshine over there. It's Narnia over there. V-logging my logging. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a long haul. Now what do you think Don's standing over there going, Quit talking to the camera, start moving logs. There, it's a big one. It goes all the way up there. And it's dead, dead as a doornail. So we're gonna flop it right there, right now. Might be the last tree for the day. And you guys get to watch. <laughs> That was easy. Look at this guy. A pair of pants. Oh yeah, it's a family show. I'm out in front of the ducks. I gotta take care of them because it's it's getting a little cold outside and, and uh, you guys have known that I've had problems with waters freezing. So I probably want some water anyways. You feel, I filled it up like when I got home and, uh, and and like you wake up in the morning and it's frozen. I, uh, yeah, 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 I'll get you. So I, uh, I went online, I ordered a heated waterer, um, got it delivered the other day. So Princess Auto, they have the heated water bowls. So you can just plug it in and it keeps the water from freezing. And hopefully like, I'll just have to fill it up as opposed to, you know, deal with a frozen chunk of ice in there. And then you put a little bit of water that's warm and then it melts a little bit. And then it, uh, it yeah, it freezes up again. So they, they basically 
like drinking hot water. So yeah, so this guy, this should this should put this this whole issue of the frozen water to bed, I, I hope. Hey, Waddles, Waddles, hello. They're like, it's sunny today. It's sunny. So it doesn't say to plug this into a GFI, but I'd, I'd probably err on the side of caution and plug this into a GFI. It is ground fault circuit interrupter. I'm trying to talk over here. Hey, come on. Want some? They want their water. And this thing is a 60 watt heater. So it's kind of like leaving a light bulb on all the time. So it's not, not a really big draw. So I'm hoping that that heated water bowl is going to be like a game changer. It's going to cut uh, the old uh, chore list down. You know, giving them water. Well, I guess I gotta give them water. This is not gonna be frozen. Feed them a little bit of uh, oatmeal. They should enjoy that. They just, they're a little skittish to the camera. Let's get back to work. We've got, uh, we got some logs to uh, cut down. Trees to cut down. Stack them up. Half the battle about working in the forest is actually getting proper access to the forest. And that usually means make it a road. It's a lot easier in the winter time to plow yourself a road because the snow tends to flatten the road out. I've, I've been making, I guess, the pass since the uh, early snow because you want to kind of just keep packing it down. If you had a snowmobile, it'd be a lot easier. You could just kind of pack a trail in the bush and uh, you know, where you go, you got tracks. Tracks are always easier to drive in the bush, but we have what we have and we're going to use it to make it work. Easier access, it's not like walking through applesauce and in the snow, it's kind of like granular snow, so it's really hard to walk in. So if you could pack it down, it's easier to kind of maneuver. So we're making it work. Don was a little crafty last night and he made these little uh, fire starters. They're basically sawdust in old canola oil, rancid canola oil he had left on. So he's packed them in a tube. Looks like a toilet paper tube. Doesn't smell too bad. We're gonna see if it works. This is the inaugural test. Did you make a wick on these things? No, I should have. Gotta be safety. Safety eventually, like these things, like what's the point of them? I wish there was a brand name on them. Geneva, don't buy these things, they're junk. I don't know why they don't make these with a big flame on it anymore. They got the ever so, I don't even know if this is gonna work. Why does everything have to be junk? This isn't working. Why do you use the torch to light everything? Cause everything's junk. It's full. <sighs> Giant Tiger, Ottawa. Giant Tiger, don't import these anymore. Oh. Well, I'm going to get a torch. I forgot to press the button. Anyway, another little lighter. Didn't work very well. It's got like no no flame whatsoever. I don't know what to do with that. Anyways, we lit up our canola tube. It might be too packed or too much canola. Sawdust might be too fine. Too fine sawdust. Maybe we need chunkier sawdust. We're going to revisit that. We're going to see if we can get it working. Chunk your sawdust. Check for the link in the description. Don will be selling those things mass producing. No, I'm kidding. He's not going to be selling those things. It's at every, every other channel. Check the link in the description. You can buy some sawdust in the tube. We'll get this thing fired up and uh, we're going to go harvest some more trees because we got uh, we got big plans for these trees.
That probably would have hit the camera anyway. All right, let's see how we get this unstuck. The longer I do this, the more I think they should have a cannon should have a line of heated cameras that have the heated hand grips. So when I'm filming, my hands are warm. I find the longer you go at it, the more machinery you want to add to the equation. So we end up going to get the tractor and basically plowing a road uh, with with the uh, with the bucket because tires and tractor tires and stuff don't really like this little applesauce type snow it's got to find granules it's not really packed so we cleared off an area with the with the loader bucket and uh, we got right down to dirt so we should be able to it should freeze overnight and be a nice solid packed road we'll be able to get in and out tomorrow with more pulls we're uh, we're well on our way we're getting uh we've got quite the stockpile now i haven't really determined how many uh how many logs we're gonna need, but uh, we don't have enough. They wanna know how you feel, Don. Tired. You're tired? Very. Very tired. Don can run circles around all of us. Just just saying. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm certain he's walking away. He's like, I'm gonna go run now. <laughs> yeah, you see we're, we're representing. He's got the Husky helmet on, I got the steel helmet on. You got to need some stickers on that bad boy. No, that avoids your... Uh... The voids of the helmet warranty? I believe it does. Oh. They have to be approved stickers. Oh, like OSHA stickers? I don't know, like hockey helmets. Oh. They have to be special stickers to go on hockey helmets. Really? Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I guess the warranty on my helmet's void. Maybe he still wants to send me some stickers that I can actually stick on. Oh well. What are you going to do? It's only getting hit in the head with a stick. Or a tree. Or a log. Anyway. Can't put stickers on helmets. Today I learned. I, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I'm sure they're gonna tell us. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you. We'll catch you tomorrow. So we're building a sugar shack, as you guys know, but we need uh, we need the internal parts of our sugar shack. So that's uh, that's our evaporator pan. Now my buddy down the road, he has uh, he has a pretty much a fully set up sugar shack already. So I'm going to go and have a look at his evaporator pan and his kind of firebox that he built. Um, he's a pretty crafty fella. So I'm going to model mine after his, but I want to, I want to kind of have a look at it, maybe take some measurements. Um, the evaporator pan itself, I'm going to have built because it's stainless steel. I'm going to have that all welded up with the, you know, kitchen grade stainless steel. So we're not, uh, you know, we're not having our, you know, we're not going to boil in a in a, like an iron vat or anything like that so we're gonna go modern modern stainless steel maybe he'll appear on camera he's, he's pretty he's a pretty private fella so maybe uh, maybe he will maybe he won't basically it's a draft hood more or less it looks like you got some uh looks like some b-vent b-vent insulation so the back doesn't catch fire and then the side of a steel building has another thermal break when you got to get something done talk to a farmer well, my draft is pretty simple. It's just on a chain. Oh, look at that. Adjustable by the link. Yeah, thing's perfect. So was this originally, so you, you had your evaporator pan. Was it originally designed? So the, was the pan first or was the firebox first? The firebox was first because the design was dictated by the sheet of steel. Okay. So then you had your pan, you had your pan made for the size of your firebox. Yeah. So it wasn't, you didn't buy the pan in anticipation of using an old oil tank. I'm uh, very similar in size. Okay. We're going to do some measurements and make sure, make sure it fits. Cause uh, like I said, I'm not building the evaporator pan. So this is just the cover I built that actually at the end of the day, weighs a ton. I can just, oh, so you don't have to put your fire out. I throw that on and I go home. And then the next morning I come back, I throw a log in, it's still warm. Still and warm. And away I go. 
So that, that lid there allows him to just turn it off basically yeah. at the end of the day. And so this is a tapered all, this is how they build them. To, okay. So that it, when it flows, the draft, yep. it flows the full width. Oh, so like it doesn't, it doesn't have cold spots at the back. Right, and that angle, they call that the arch. Okay. That forces the heat up at the back. Oh. So this is the top portion of the uh, evaporator and this is where all the action happens. So the uh, maple sap goes in here and then it gets evaporated off and then there's a little convenient little off or little drain thing. So you, you uh, and Gord was saying, when he gets it to the point where it's ready, you drain off just enough so you can actually lift the pan right off the firebox. Cause otherwise what happens is it boils off too much and then you turn it into caramel sauce and that's the bad news. So yeah, this is the stainless steel pan, kind of like what we're gonna have our buddy, have our buddy weld up. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. It's got all the bends in it to keep its rigidity once it gets heated. Because otherwise it would just, anyways. All right, I think we've got all our information. Now we can go build some stuff. All right, boys and girls, got them all stacked up kind of in a, just kind of a test. There's a couple different options when you come into log cabins and, and there's, you know, the full scribe method and that takes a lot of time. And then there's uh, another method called the button pass where they got the log kind of button and then the next one goes and passes it and then you fix them with rebar. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do yet. And obviously this isn't the location where I'm going to put it, uh, but I'm just kind of like laying it out, just kind of getting a feel for how big it is what the size is, kind of what the overall, well, it's not gonna look, it's not gonna look anything like this. Well, it kind of look like that. It's kind of like a rectangular square. So uh, yeah, so this is kind of, as you can see, it's coming along. We've got our materials kind of, I think we have about half. We have about half of the amount of logs we're gonna need. So we still gotta do some more harvesting, but you kind of get the idea of what we're going for. I think when you're planning on putting a sugar shack and you kind of want it at the lowest spot of your property. And the reason for that is because everything's downhill so you can just kind of slide all your sap downhill and kind of not work so hard collecting it and if you want to do like a further like a pipeline system it's all downhill it's all gravity fed so i'm here with my brother you live in this bush Try as much as i can this is chris live off the bush live off the bush in yeah. the bush i don't know i was thinking like here oh huh. that's not a bad spot it's, it's not a bad spot at all there's a big dead tree right here they're all dead Push that one out and you can just tuck it right in there. Can you go fall? No, not falling. That's not a bad spot. You almost gotta like burn it out though. You gotta cut and then you probably need to fill some of that pond goop in there. I don't know about the pond goop. Pond goop's gonna be super frozen. It's not the ideal time to be building in the middle of winter, but spring's coming. I think if you had your, your tire idea, you could jack it up enough and then you could just backfill underneath couple tires three tires four tires but you got to yeah. fill the tires so the <laughs> we'll jack it up and fill them after the plan was to use uh some tire i don't think i mentioned i, I might have talked about that but the plan is to put the 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 base of the log cabin sugar shack on tires and basically make it like a rammed earth earth ship sort of foundation so like either one two three on each side and then one two three at the front so you have eight tires in total can, like foundation can you not Make like build it on top of the floor and then jack it all up after and then fill it. Well, you could. You could just shoot dirt underneath it. That's what I'm thinking. Well, yeah, like build it on piers. Yeah, we, we've done that before. Piers and then fill it in. That way, because it it's probably a little. It's not low that it's going to get wet here. Yeah. But it's on the lower side. Yeah. I think it's dry. It's dry here all year. I think what we got to do is we got to actually light a fire here to determine what's there because we don't even know. Like it's just, it's just, it's just a pile of sticks right now. But then you'll have you'll have all the all maples everything up here and then you'll just make a trail yeah. up through here so you can come in the back way or whatever yeah you have, you have your trail that goes down to the creek so you have water access yeah, fresh water and whatnot and it's kind of a it's a nice spot and yeah. there's some hemlock you got your silver birch over there and again it's kind of like and, and once you're once you're boiling sap it's kind of like a it gives you time to kind of tinker in the bush and kind of clean up the deadfall and the stuff that's kind of like I said, this is an unmanaged forest, so this is this is good. This is not a bad spot. I think next week's another week. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this guy up for today. 
because uh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Join me on the next one where we uh, we get more of this guy done.